In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, inventory space is precious. A lot of this problem stems from key items cluttering up your inventory. What if I told you that I have a solution for that? Stay tuned. The first step to this is to max out your inventory with items. This is most easily achieved by engaging these spiteful crow enemies who drop cookies 100% of the time. Then once you've maxed out your inventory like so, proceed through the game as normal. For some bonus fun, if you plug in the second controller and hit select during this cutscene, you can have some fun with the lights, like so. So if you've made sure to have a max inventory up until the point where Pokey's mom squashes Buzz Buzz, he'll become confused and say, what the? It seems that you are carrying too many things. Since you can't take it, I'll give it to your sister. In the blink of an eye, like magic, she'll have it. Therefore, Tracy will possess the soundstone. And you won't have to clutter up your inventory with it for the entire game. I bet you you didn't know about this piece of hidden dialogue from Pokey in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo at the very beginning of the game. How you trigger this dialogue is you have to either not collect the cracked bat from Tracy's room, or you have to just otherwise not equip it. If you have not done that, and then go to get picky from the meteorite, Porky here will tell you, sorry about giving you this game type advice, but you should equip your weapon. Do you know what equip means? Then he asks yes or no. Isn't that considerate of him? But what happens if you choose yes or no? If you choose yes, he says, okay, that's good. Be sure to pay attention to details like that. But if you say no, Porky will tell you it means use or wear. You must equip items in order to use or wear them. Equip is used a lot in games like this. Isn't that considerate of him in case you've never played an RPG before and you didn't know that? Who said that Porky didn't do anything nice for anybody? But you already knew that. How do you know that I already knew that? Are you a time traveler? Did you know in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo you can actually lose the Starman Jr. fight? It's pretty simple. The first thing you gotta do is get Ness up to level 12. Oh man, finally level 12. That only took couple weeks. Anyways, what I want to draw attention to is now that we have Shield Alpha after becoming level 12, we want to engage the Starman Jr. in this boss fight. So very first thing, you want to cast Shield Alpha, because Buzz Buzz will go first to cast his Magic Nullifying Shield, but because Ness has the Shield Alpha ability, it will overwrite Buzz Buzz's shield, therefore making it so the Starman Jr.'s magic can get through and actually deal damage. And as you can see, we have 185 mortal damage done. So what happens if we actually die here? The game does actually take you back to your house, skipping the Starman Jr. fight entirely. However, it's not a matter of just skipping the flag. Like, the flag has been set. You can't actually re-engage with this fight even if you wanted to. Isn't that time well spent? Did you know about this hidden cutscene in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo? I'm doing this because I trust you. First, let's go to the basement. Ah, I can tell by the look on your face you don't want to hang out, do you? That's alright. After all, we're not even related. I know you think I'm a big liar, but maybe I'll surprise you. How you activate this cutscene is, as soon as you acquire the soundstone, if you go all the way back up to Liar Exaggerate's house, up near where the meteor is, and just follow him all the way back to the end of this mysterious cave here, he'll have this to tell you, as well as this to show you. So, Ness buddy, I found proof of a great treasure, a huge hall. Yeah, haha. -ha. I'll show you, but you're the only one. Come on. So if we go all the way back into this cave here, there's this mysterious glowing statue. The golden statue is glowing strangely. What could this possibly mean? In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, did you know about the best piece of headgear located in the first town of Onet? Well, stick around till the end of this video and you will. But first thing we're going to do is consult the town map, which can be located and acquired at the Onet Library, which is just immediately to the east of us here. Then what we want to do is, around the general vicinity of this kid here, if you go into the woods right here and go straight up, you'll find the secret hideout. And from here what you want to do is talk to this kid in the helmet and he'll tell you, I'll give you my Mr. Baseball cap. I know you've wanted for a long time. It's the best cap for somebody really brave like you. And then you'll acquire the Mr. Baseball Cap. So if you equip it, you'll notice that it's one defense higher than the regular baseball cap, but you can save $20, which is better off spent on either a better weapon or on a cheap bracelet. That's Mr. Baseball Cap for you! I wouldn't exactly call this a secret, 
but in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, if you talk to one of these traveling entertainers after unlocking their shack, they'll tell you, wow, you open the door. All right, here's a trinket for good luck. It's the Travel Charm. But if you go to equip the Travel Charm, it doesn't appear to do anything. But if you go and look in the help text, it does in fact tell you that it protects you from paralysis. However, my question to you is this. What's more valuable to you? An extra inventory space and $30? Or this very travel charm? Because you do get a second travel charm, not too much further in the game when you go to Peaceful Rest Valley. Furthermore, when you go to Lilliput Steps, you can find yourself a great charm, which does what this charm does, but also grants an additional 5 speed to the party member you equip it on. So let me know in the comments what you find more valuable on your quest. Just yesterday, I found out about a glitch you can perform with the bicycle in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo on the Mother 2 Deluxe Discord server, which you should totally join, and the link to is in the description. But I'll show you how to do this right here. It's wheel easy. First, you gotta ride around on your bicycle until you receive a phone call. This might take you a while. Once the phone starts to ring, you pick it up and you tell your dad who's on the other end that you're not gonna take a break yet! Once you hang up the phone after being grounded by your father, if you try to ring the bell now, you get this sound instead. Wait, is that Ness's bicycle or is that truck there trying to back up? This glitch serves no practical purpose, so just have fun with it, but bear in mind, if you get off of the bicycle, if you want to honk like a car again, you have to wait for your father to call back. I'd love to tell you more interesting things about the bicycle and Earthbound, but for right now, I'm too tired. Today, I'm pumped to tell you about two more bicycle-related Easter eggs and Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. Tell me in the comments if you knew about both of these already. The first I want to show off is, did you know you can actually bring the bicycle back to Punk Shore in Tucson? You just gotta tell the guy no, and then he'll tell you, you're here to return the bike? Look how low your seat is, jeez. You must have short legs. That's it. I'll call you Stubby Legs. So this guy will insult you, but then you talk to him again, he's like, hey, Stubby Legs. Consistency, right? The second bicycle-related Easter egg can only be accomplished during the ending walkabout after you've taken Paula home. But if you bring the bicycle to deep darkness and drive through the sludge, you get a special bicycle through sludge sound effect. Listen closely. Personally, I think they missed an opportunity to have a special deep darkness only tandem bicycle so the party doesn't have to drown in the swamp. What do you guys think? In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, the Mashermize status, among other things, you can't heal it with magic, and you can't use any items to remove the status. It may seem like at first that there isn't much room for error, but it's actually not as bad as it seems. Arguably the most annoying part about this status is how it garbles your controls, but all it actually does is just rotate the directional pad. For instance here, up is down and down is up. So all we have to do is turn the controller upside down, and now you can walk normally again. You can just navigate to a hospital and talk to this fun guy right here. He'll buy the mushroom off your head for 50 bucks. Also, I just discovered this graphical glitch. If you walk into a tree, it makes the mushroom disappear. The game also responsibly tells you not to ride your bicycle while on mushrooms. Anyway, these mushroom picker people will also buy your mushrooms for $50. But say you're really hard up and have revival capabilities and a spare character, you can always let the character die and revive them. It's kind of like reviving someone who has a heart arrhythmia to fix it. Today for Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, I want to show you this exploit colloquially known as the Tucson Skip. What we need to do here is use a skip sandwich and you kind of wiggle between pixels is how this works. But be sure you have plenty of skip sandwiches, it's a lot easier to pull off that way. But it might take you a minute, so... Alright, we'll just keep wiggling, and we got through. Hopefully we can do this, we have one skip sandwich left. So here, we just want to try to wiggle next to this tree here. See if we can wiggle through those pixels. I missed it, I'm gonna go around here, hope we get through. Alright, great, we got through. So now we want to go back towards Tucson. And then these ghosts being confused by the direction you came out. We'll now spit you out back into Threed, so now you can skip Tucson entirely. We can all agree about the worst part about pizza, having to wait for it to arrive.
But what if I told you that in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, you don't have to wait an agonizing three minutes for the pizza to arrive. Here's the trick. What you do is you order the pizza like normal, but then you talk to your father and save the game. Then you turn the game off, but then immediately turn it back on. Boot up your save file. And then, for whatever reason, the game doesn't realize that three minutes hasn't passed. The timer is pushed ahead, say, about two minutes. So rather than waiting an agonizing three minutes when you're hungry, now you only have to wait 60 seconds or less. I mean, Ness is a growing boy. He needs to have a nice tasty pizza to build those strong bones. And here we go. Here's the pizza man. And he's got a pizza for us, which we can share with our friends. This is a fairly well-known feature in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, but if you talk to this gentleman right here, or anywhere where fresh eggs are sold, you can buy one for $12. But the thing is, if you wait two minutes in real time, these fresh eggs right here, the fresh eggs that were in your inventory are now fully grown chickens. So if you go to another dealer, such as right over here, you can sell the previously $12 eggs for $110 as a fully grown chicken. So you can actually make an okay profit off of this early game. I don't have a ton of use for this, but if you talk to this gentleman here, it does supply you with at least a free copper bracelet, which is pretty good armor for the start of the game. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, there's a way you can take out Mondo Mole so easily, you can do it with Ness by himself. So allow me to show you this trick. So what you need to do first is ensure that Ness is level 14, because what you need to achieve this trick is to cast Paralysis Alpha. Paralysis Alpha has a 100% chance of working on Mondo Mole. So now he is powerless to stop you. All he can do is heal himself every so often to delay the inevitable. Otherwise, you just keep smashing away. You may as well even pick it up a little bit, do a few Psy Rockins to rock his world even faster. That's all you need to do. Now you can progress the story, get Paula, and come back to this Your Sanctuary location to level her up the most effective way possible. Did you know about this piece of dialogue in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo? Let me know in the comments if you did. What I wanted to show off here is you see how Ness is homesick. Normally, in order to cure homesickness, you have to call your mom, and that will cure your homesickness, or just to go home, that also works. But seeing as we acquired homesick status while in Happy Happy Village, I figured I would just go to the doctor. Normally, the doctor is pretty useless in this game because you get healing Alpha so early that getting him to cure status ailments is pretty pointless. But if you talk to him while you're homesick, he will have this to tell Ness. I don't think there's anything wrong with you. By the way, what a sad look in your eyes. You, the boy in the red cap, you must be homesick. That's nothing you need to be ashamed of. Anybody who's on a long trip will miss home. In this case, the best thing to do is call home and hear your mom's voice. Isn't that sweet of the doctor? Homesickness, sweet homesickness. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. Homesickness is a really mysterious status. It seems to come and go as it pleases, but there is a rhyme and a reason for it. Firstly, did you know you can't even get homesickness in this game until you're level 16? You also can't get homesickness if you're over level 76. This is probably to indicate Ness growing up and maturing after you get the magic and boost. Homesickness only activates at the end of the battle, so if you didn't notice homesickness working in the middle of a battle, it's because you just got lucky skipping the first few turns. There's a few ways to cure homesickness. You can either talk to your mom, or you can even go to your sanctuary location. But did you know at the end of every battle you have an approximately 1 in 128 chance of homesickness being applied? Where does that number sound familiar? Do you learn anything new about homesickness today, or do you have any questions about homesickness? Leave a comment down below and I might answer it if I'm not feeling homesick. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, the Possess status is another fun one that you can't cure with any items, or any magic, kind of. But how you're expected to deal with it is just talk to this blue-haired fella. He can cure this, among other things. You can sort of heal the Possession status with magic, 
The best way to do this yourself is to use Prey with Paula and hope that she can make everyone feel strange. Occasionally, if you're lucky, Paula will cast fire and it'll actually hit the tiny little ghost, doing some amount of damage to it. Doesn't seem to always happen though, so this is a real Hail Mary way to go about this. I also noticed in this area that's itty bitty, that if you come here with a regular ghost, all of a sudden it becomes a big boo instead. Anyway, the main takeaway from this video is you either go to the hospital to get rid of possession, or if you're super late in the game and get possessed, any of these enemies that cast fire on you will exercise this ghost real good. Normally in Earthbound, you have to pay to get the bubble gum in order to acquire your friend the bubble monkey to progress the game. But I'm going to show you how you can get the bubble monkey for free. So what you want to do is beforehand go outside and fight a spiteful crow and get them to drop a cookie. Sell that cookie for three dollars. Then what you want to do is sell Jeff's protractor for one dollar. This will leave you with six dollars. Then what you want to do is buy a cup of coffee, which will leave you with zero dollars. So then what you do is you talk to the lady who sells the bubble gum. If you buy a pack of bubble gum, you can have the monkey for free. Otherwise, he'll cost you a buck. Do you want him? I do. What? You don't even have a buck? Then you get to have my monkey for free. Here's a pack of bubble gum. Don't forget to take the money. You save one whole dollar! In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, normally in order to beat Master Belch, you have to use the Fly Honey in order for your attacks to even be effective. But did you know there's not one, but two ways that you can beat Master Belch without using the Fly Honey? First off, I'm gonna show you that you can use PK Flash Beta on Master Belch, which has the potential of killing him one out of eight times, just like so. Eventually, if you spam prey enough times, you'll be able to make everyone in the battlefield feel strange. So if you're patient, eventually Master Belch will blow nauseating breath at himself. So now all you gotta do is survive the battle, and you will win, which I will cut to. Then after about 20 minutes of pure survival, Master Belch's own ripe odor will defeat him. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, did you know about the insignificant item? What you need to do is go to the Threed Hospital and go in this leftmost room here. Which appears to be empty, but if you check the drawers, Ness checks the drawers, there was an insignificant item in the drawer. So here's the insignificant item, and if you look at it, it seems, you know, fairly insignificant. It doesn't look like it would do much of anything, but if you go all the way back to the Tucson hospital and go in its leftmost hospital room, you'll find a gentleman here. But before we give him his item back, let's try to use it first. By using the insignificant present, you had a very fruitful experience that cannot be understood by someone who does not use something insignificant. But if you use it on him, thank you. You've made me so happy. After my life, this is the second most important thing to me. Because you're so kind, I want to give you this magic truffle. It's a souvenir from Scaraba. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, if you rescue Paula and then speak to Orange Kid, you actually get some different dialogue. Normally, when you talk to him, it costs $200 to invest in his invention. But if you wait till now, he has this to say. You didn't invest any money in my venture. But someone else donated a few million bucks. Who was that? So everything is great. So would you like to invest, say, 50 bucks? No, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And you never heard how much money I got too, right? Wink, wink. Who's he talking about? Everdread? Did Everdread give him a few million bucks? Because it was dirty money? But anyway, we'll buy it for 50 bucks. And if you try to sell his Suporma machine, you actually get $25, which seems to take this reduced price into account. And in case you've never used the Suporma, if you use it, it sings the song Ode to Orange Kid. As soon as it finishes, it breaks down. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, you can buy your very own house in the opening town of Onet for the low, low price of $7,500. But did you realize if you enter this house and check the drawer, you get some bonus dialogue? You found an old magazine. Are you going to read it? Let's do that. My Secret Life, Chapter 3. I was neither a murder suspect, nor a target for an international spy organization. But I drove a car down the Jersey Turnpike at 80 miles per hour, 
A police officer pulled me over and asked for my driver's license. He said I was going 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. I instantly pointed to my wife and said, I'm in a hurry. My wife is in labor. Fortunately, my wife actually had a big stomach. I hoped he'd let me go with this excuse. Oh, since it's an emergency, I'll lead you to the hospital with my police car, he said. No, it's not necessary. Why not, asked the officer. Ah, uh, well, let's get going, said the officer. No, no, we can't. This baby is a demon child. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, if you're lucky, you can encounter one of these green caterpillars in the Dusty Dunes desert. But if you've ever actually engaged one in combat before, it's much easier to accomplish if you unequip everyone's weapons. But what may surprise you about this enemy is it's actually kind of tough. Like, see, they're doing pretty big damage. Fortunately, you should be able to take it out still in about two turns. But I just thought it might be interesting to show actually fighting this thing. Because normally you don't get the opportunity. But if we're not quick here, Paula's gonna die, Jeff's almost gonna die. But our gut saves us. Normally you don't have to do all this, but if you do beat this enemy, you get yourselves 10,000 experience points. Which is pretty juicy for this point in the game. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, did you know about the heart-wrenching story of the sesames in the Dusty Dunes desert? Why would you feel like talking to a tiny black sesame like me? I want to apologize to the white sesame that I hurt before, if I could only just see her. We're gonna ignore the photo, man. If you want to find the precious white sesame, she is more or less diagonal to the black sesame. Over here. If you can see her right here. I heard that the black sesame that I used to love is somewhere in this desert. If you see him, please tell him that I still love him. Really? You've seen him already? Was he okay? Hmm, I see. Then if we relay the message, that the white sesame had for the black sesame, he'll have this additional dialogue to say. What? The white sesame still loves me? Weep, weep. Oh, they still love each other. Isn't that romantic? Today for Earthbound, for the Super Nintendo, I need to point out something that bothers me. At this point in the game, in order to progress, you have to give Gerardo Montague some food. This hole's great. Good hole, good hole, good hole. First, someone asked me to dig for buried gold. I began to feel like I was obligated to find it. Man, am I starving. Do you have any food you can spare? If you select no, he says, the humanitarian thing to do is to help people out when they're hungry. Although I hate it, pizza would work for me. And if you know me, I like finding situational dialogue in Earthbound, so I figure if I went to the lengths to order a pizza in 60 seconds or less like in my other video, and give it to him, surely there'd be situational dialogue about it. But nope, he just says thank you. If I find the gold, I'll give it to you. Nothing situational, not like, yuck, fine then. Nothing, he's just fine with it. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, did you ever go to the lengths to find these lost pair of contact lenses here in the Dusty Dunes Desert? They were a memento of this person's grandma and very important to them. If you find them, bring them to him and he'll give you a reward. I am Pentanella Giovanni. Find me at the Foresight Bakery, second floor. So, if you look right here, this is where the contact lens is located. So let's give it back to Mr. Giovanni and see what our reward is. What? You came to deliver my grandma's memento, the contact lens. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's our family tradition to keep things forever. Okay, I'll give you something as a reward. Here's my socks <laughs> that I only use for special occasions. I've worn these socks for just five years. There are no holes, and they've only been worn once since the last washing. They stink a little, but they're still good. Don't refuse me here, I'm being generous. When used during battle, the enemy gets so nauseous from the ripe odor, they cannot fight. Gone after one use. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, you can gamble at that slot machine in the Dusty Dunes Desert. Or rather, the Sanchez brothers can make you happy. But have you ever bothered to get all of their prizes? Well, let's spend a thousand dollars that we found in this present and find out. Amigo, you won. A very big winning, my friend. Here's the big prize for you. Ness and Jeff won a can of fruit juice as a prize if they all look to the left. If they all look straight up, you get a chick as a prize, which, hey, you can at least sell that. If they all look to the right, you get a very lovely skip sandwich as a prize. I wonder what triple sevens is gonna be. 
finally, we hit it big. Took long enough. Here's the prize for the important amigo. We got a PSI caramel, which actually is in complete trash. Lastly, if you win a prize with a full inventory, this is what happens. That's what I thought, but amigo, you have no more room. I'm sorry, but the deal's off. Your payoff took the day off, amigo. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. So first talk to this monkey and give him a skip sandwich. It can be a DX if you want. I'm giving him a regular one because I'm being cheap. Then proceed to give both of these monkeys what they want. This one wants a protein drink. You can get that on the way to Saturn Valley. So if you just hold on to it, you don't have to make any other trips. This one, you have to call the mock pizza delivery man and give him a pizza. So once you've done both of those things, go in the right hand most door. Then just go all the way to the end here to this lady monkey and give her a ruler. Jeff starts the game with the ruler, so just don't throw it away and you'll have everything you need. Then talk to this other lady monkey and she'll give you the king banana, which is the last item you will need in this cave. Now going through the pizza monkey hole. And now just speak with the first monkey you see, who is man came in who we will donate the King Banana to. And so long as you have the pencil eraser, that's the Monkey Cave. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, after completing the Monkey Cave, you get the Trout Yogurt Dispenser. But have you ever bothered to look to see what it does in the help text? Yogurt Dispenser, items for Jeff, invented by Apple Kid. If used during combat, some damage will be dealt to the enemy. Though it's not understood why this happens. It is just yogurt after all. Can be used many times. And what better way to test it out than on this mole playing rough right here. So let's test it out. He's going to get the jump on us. But let's see how much damage this trout yogurt machine even does. If it's such an effective weapon. Three points of damage. It'll do anywhere from about one to four HP worth of damage. But I just thought that would be funny to show off. Also... If you use 100% paralysis on the Mondo Mole, you could hypothetically kill him with the Trout Yogurt Machine. So if you've ever done that, let me know in the comments. Did you know that Earthbound for the Super Nintendo is actually a two-player RPG? I think Nintendo dropped the ball big time by not having this plastered everywhere in the advertising campaign. But on top of this game actually being two-player, if you have the second controller plugged in and control the game with the second controller, there's two tricks you can do with the select button. First one being this meteor right here. If you hit the select button, you're able to play with this light. Why are you able to play with this light? I don't know, but it's neat that you're able to. Secondly, in Summers, or more specifically Toto, when Tony calls to ask for your real name, if you hit the select button on the second controller, you can make that flag on this ship be bouncing up and down. So find a good buddy, play a two-player campaign of Earthbound. Also, let me know if this works with the multi-tab. Maybe you could play this with four players. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, it annoys me how low of a level your final party member Pooh is when you get him. What I like to do is kill off the rest of my party by taking away all of their equipment and fighting these two shattered men solo with Pooh. I make sure to get two super plush teddy bears first. But then in the first Shattered Man fight, I like to use a Shield Alpha in order to make sure that we don't get cheaply knocked out right off the hop. And then I like to use three Freeze Bees. From there, just use a bottle of water that you should have acquired in Delam. Then use your fourth and final Freeze Bee in order to take out the Shattered Man. This will level up Pooh pretty quickly. Top yourself up with the delicious brain food lunch between battles. Repeat the process, and you'll be able to skyrocket Poo from level 18 to level 30 quite easily. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, in order to unlock the fifth Your Sanctuary location, you have to watch this performance by Venus, who has gone on to great heights by singing in the Mad Dummy song in Undertale. After the performance, you must get the signed banana in order to proceed with your quest. But also, Venus will give Ness this bonus a smack which is an onomatopoeia for a kiss. But what happens if you accomplish this task with Ness dead in the party? Venus kisses Paula anyway. Venus, you harlot. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, after taking out the Plague Rat of Doom and unlocking the Magnet Hill Your Sanctuary location, 
You have to get this item here. It's the carrot key. Which, if you weren't aware, you do need to take it and go to Dalam in order to unlock the rabbit statues, a special type of Bunny's favorite carrot. However, did you know there's technically a second use for the carrot key? If you walk all the way back to Happy Happy Village, remember, you can't teleport back to Happy Happy Village. You have to walk all the way back. But if you do, and you use the carrot on this cow right here, he says, Cows and carrots, that's a nutty combination. How would you ever figure that out? In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, I just want to point out this hidden in plain sight shop in the town of Skaraba, just south of Summers. So if you check this sign, it's Hassan Shop, where dollars are acceptable. I'm still not sure if this is intentionally a Looney Tunes reference or not. But in any event, if we go to this shop, and just see what they have. It's mostly a bunch of stuff that's not overly noteworthy, but like hidden right in the middle is a sudden guts pill, which is actually a pretty good item, especially for Ness. So let's just go into the help text and see what it does in case you weren't really aware. Sudden guts pill, doubles your guts during battle. However, after a battle, your guts returns to normal, gone after one use. And if I'm not mistaken, this stacks twice, if not three times, so you're gonna get all kinds of smash hits in. Earthbound for Super Nintendo has many Beatles references in it, such as the Japanese name of Mother, which is a John Lennon song. Also, the Japanese version of Earthbound for Don't Care Names all have Beatle references, such as John Lennon for Ness, Yoko Ono for Paula, Paul McCartney for Jeff, George Harrison for Pooh, not Jorge, Ringo Starr is your dog, Honey Pie for your favorite homemade food, and Love is All You Need. If you knock on this door in your hometown of Onet, this person asks you, Pop Quiz, a Beatles song, XXX today, can you fill in the blanks? Yes, I can. That's correct, I'm impressed. If you talk to the saxophonist of the Runaway Five, he'll start singing Money, That's What I Want. When Dungeon Man is following you, the music sounds an awful lot like Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And last but not least, this yellow submarine. Are these all the Beatles references? Let me know in the comments if there's any that I missed. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, much like the Dusty Dunes Desert, there's a little caterpillar fella that you can run into. But what is he even like? This guy's not even in the strategy guide, so let's... Let's take a look here. He is the master criminal worm, and much like the criminal caterpillar, he'll just PK fire A at you. Which again, if you're caught ill-prepared, because normally in order to encounter this guy, you're gonna have to have a few party members either have been bitten the dust, or set it up in such a way that you turn around like we did, have no equipment on, so we can't instant knock him out here. But see, if this goes on another turn, Paula will get KO'd. But fortunately, we have Freeze Omega, which is absolutely busted. But if you do take out one of these Caterpillar fellas, these Wormy fellas, they give you 20,000 experience, which is just lovely. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, if you're a wet blanket like me, you really don't have any patience for the photo guy. But what if I showed you a way that you can skip the photo guy, at least in some areas? So if you really don't want to deal with the photo guy, what you would do is you can use teleport. It will bypass the photo guy flag. So all you do is just say, yeah, we're going to go to Onet. Why not? But then just crash right into the door. And there you go. No photo op. Low photo guy percent. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, when you make it to Deep Darkness, there is five magic truffles that you can find by searching around the bases of trees. These all heal you 80 PP, first of which is hidden right here. I will show you where to find the other four. The second one can be found at the base of this tree by the arms dealer, right here. The third truffle can be found near that parakeet. If you've reached the parakeet, you've gone too far. It's right in here. The fourth one can be found just past the broken helicopter, but before you reach this landmass here. The fifth and final magic truffle can be found pretty much due north from the boss fight in deep darkness. There's your fifth magic truffle. Enjoy your trip. 
Forget the Sword of Kings. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, a brand new ultimate weapon has been discovered for Pooh. Not only does it grant Pooh an additional 80 offense, it grants him 80 guts as well. What could this ultimate weapon for Pooh possibly be, you ask? Well, a magic truffle. You're probably wondering how I equipped the magic truffle. I'm gonna show you how right now, and believe me, it's easier than getting a Sword of Kings. You need to have a teddy bear, then an item that you can equip, then the item you want to equip in that order. Next, get into a battle and equip the equipable item in battle. The teddy bear has to die before the equipable equips in order for this to work. It'll look like it equipped as normal. In actuality, it will equip the next item in your inventory. You can do this for every item in the game for a whole range of effects. For example, this is the best ultimate equipment loadout I could find for Pooh. Shout out to Dr. Swellman's video on the equipment scramble glitch. You should like and subscribe and check out that video of his, if it's not too much truffle. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, the Stonehenge base is one of the most difficult dungeons in the entire game, but it can be made easier if you know how to get the jump on one of the enemies that just happens to pollute the area, the Starman. Now if you weren't aware, in Earthbound, if you get the jump on an enemy, you'll get a nice green swirl. But what's counterproductive about the Starman is that in order to get the jump on them, you gotta get them from the front. So what you want to do is you just kind of want to edge one onto the screen until they start to move. Just take it slow and steady, then once they're moving, this one just happens to have reached the end of his, whatever you call it, like the zone he spawns in. But if you just take it easy and just walk right up to him once he spawns in place, you'll get a green swirl every single time. And this is going to be very useful for when we grind for the legendary Sword of Kings. Arguably the most frustrating part about Earthbound for the Super Nintendo is grinding for all the ultimate equipment. But what if I told you now that it's released on the Nintendo Switch that there's an easy, albeit time-consuming method to get all the ultimate equipment. First grab a pen and paper and then find the enemy that you want to rob blind. Next, put yourself in a favorable situation and begin your assault. Chances are you didn't get the ultimate equipment yet. What you want to do now is use the Switch's rewind feature to rewind before the battle and try again. But this time, go into the menu, move the cursor once, mark it down on your paper, and try again. Every time you move the cursor in the menu, it'll manipulate the RNG for getting the ultimate item by two. However, if you still don't have it after 64 goes, then you simply hit B to bring up the money menu. That'll change the frame by one, giving you an additional 64 tries. If you've done this right, you are guaranteed to get an ultimate equipment after 128 attempts. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, every single one of your party member's best weapons are dropped by an enemy. In this case, Pooh's best weapon is from the Starman Super, this gold Starman here. But you just gotta grind it out. This one's the most annoying because if you wait until much later in the game, you can't get it anymore. Because once you beat the boss in here, it's just gone. It's gone forever. Oh, and looky here, we got the Sword of Kings. So let's take a look at the legendary Sword of Kings that has like less than what, like a 1% chance of dropping? Where is it? Sword of Kings. Pooh can equip this weapon, increases your offense. And if you equip it, it most certainly does increase your offense by 30. It's really not worth the grind, but if you're obsessive compulsive about this stuff, uh, congratulations if you get it. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, if you want to get Jeff's best weapon, you're gonna have to try your luck against these uncontrollable sphere enemies, which are also a 1 in 128 chance of getting their rare drop. So let's just try our luck here with any amount of luck, it won't take too many tries. What? Really? Okay, well, uh, uh, where, it's in here. Okay, so we got broken antenna, ugh, piece of broken equipment that looks like a satellite dish. Genius Jeff should be able to fix it sometime. You get the Gaia beam from this, but in all seriousness, you're better off just getting the broken bazooka from the arms dealer in Scaraba. But if you get it, congratulations.
In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, in order to get Paula's best weapon, you have to take out a dinosaur. How cool is that? You have to beat the Chompasaur in order to get her 1 in 128 chance weapon. But how I like to deal with the Chompasaur is to have Jeff just use a multi-bottle rocket and have everyone else defend. This is probably about the easiest way to deal with it. It's a one-shot. Then all you have to do is just get lucky. We'll see how long it takes for us to get lucky here. Nice. All right, let's check out this magic fry pan here. Paula can equip this weapon. And I don't know why it doesn't tell you in the help text, but what it lacks in offense up, it more than makes up for in guts up. You get a hundred guts from the magic fry pan, which will be pretty crucial in keeping Paula alive later in the game. So congratulations if you get it. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, in order to get the best armor in the game, the Star Pendant, you have to beat the Major Psychic Psycho that you can find in the Fire Spring. What I would recommend doing first, though, is beating the Your Sanctuary boss here, so they always run away from you. This is one of the more annoying ultimate equipment to get, because they're always coupled with a regular Psychic Psycho, effectively making the 1 in 128 drop a 1 in 256 drop. As every time a drop is decided, it's a coin flip between two enemies. Finally! Alright, who even has it? Must be equipped on your body. It protects you from fire, freeze, flash, and paralysis attacks. I mean, it is pretty good, but like... Uh, just don't do this to yourself. It's got a lot of defense, too. But hey, if you have the fortitude to do this, congratulations if you get it. There is a staggering amount of hidden situational dialogue in Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. One such example is here in Moonside. If you happen to bring along the pencil eraser with you and use it on the Manny Manny statue, this is the dialogue you get. Do you really think this looks like a pencil? Well, maybe I do. Furthermore, the second time you encounter the Manny Manny statue in Magicant, if you bring along the Eraser Eraser, this is the dialogue you get. It sort of looks like some primitive human statue, if you look at it from the right angle, but it definitely doesn't look like an Eraser, does it? Well, I happen to think it does look like an Eraser. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. The short answer is yes. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, it is possible to bring the Flying Man all the way to the boss in Magicant and beat them. But how do you pull this off? What happens if you do pull this off? First, I'd recommend doing a solo mission with Ness to the Sea of Eden and taking out the three Krakens by himself so they don't have a chance to kill Flying Man. Also, don't be afraid to use the oldest trick in the book in Earthbound, which is despawning enemies off the screen. Now, the secret sauce I use to make this all come together is with bags of Dragonite. Because this nightmare starts with a PSI shield at the beginning of the battle, and Dragonite is considered physical. It'll do anywhere from about four to 600 damage per hit. So here it is, the moment of truth. What happens when you bring Flying Man all the way through Magicant? Well, unfortunately, along with Magicant, the Flying Man disappears along with it. So you cannot take him back with you to this physical realm. But hey, at least we have a little silhouette of a flying man. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, if you want to get Paula's best accessory, the Goddess Ribbon, you have to fight the Ghost of Starman. As usual, it's a 1 in 128 chance of getting it. Which is really exciting and fun and I love it. What? Seriously? <laughs> What's with this run? That was like my fifth try. Let's throw this Meteotite away. Alright, so Paula's Ribbon. Let's take a look at it. Miscellaneous equipment that can only be used by Paula. So let's just uh, equip it. It's, uh, it's her best accessory, alright. It's not super great, but it all adds up with Paula, so congratulations if you get it. In Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, if you want to get Ness's best weapon, the Gutsy Bat. You have to fight the Bionic Kraken, not the regular Kraken, like the strategy guide said. That was an error. You have to fight the Bionic Kraken, and it can only be found in the final dungeon of the game, and only in the last two rooms before the final boss. So good luck getting it.
Good. I need to, I gotta throw something away. <sighs> Last but not least, let's check out the Gutsy Bat. Gutsy Bat. Ness can equip this weapon. When equipped, it increases your guts. It doesn't give you the most attack, I don't think, but it does increase your guts by 127 points. So enjoy your smash hits for the final boss. <laughs>